Hello everyone and welcome to another video. So I don't know about you, but I spend a lot of time on my bike. I commute to work via bike, I enjoy mountain biking, road biking, and just tooling around the neighborhood with the family. As such, I wanted to have a discussion today about one of the most important pieces of safety equipment you can use while riding your bike, namely your helmet. So this here is the Tectal Race Spin made by POC. Um, it retails for around $220, which I know is a little bit on the pricier end for helmets, but if there's one piece of equipment I don't think you want to skimp on. It's the, the good old brain bucket. I've had this helmet for about six months. I've put around 1,500 miles on it spread out over all of those different applications we just mentioned. And today I want to share some of my thoughts and impression uh, with you. So we'll show you everything that comes in the box. We'll mount some cameras and lights to the helmet. And uh, we'll talk about some of the good and bad parts of this helmet that might not be immediately obvious. So if that sounds like fun, why don't we go ahead and rewind time and I'll show you what the helmet and the box looked like when I purchased it. And we'll do the unboxing portion of this video. All right, so let's open this puppy up. Uh, I got this from REI. So, kind of excited. They always have good stuff. All right, let's see. What do we got? Okay, here is, yeah, wow. That's like the simplest box I've ever seen. Uh, okay, here it is. The Tectal Race Spin. Oh, well, <laughs> and I guess that's how you open it. You just apparently just dump it out. <laughs> so, uh, that was a pretty easy unboxing. Uh, let's just quick look at the box again. Uh, nothing pretty impressive. Again, this uh, I got the medium size. I think that'll fit my noggin. But uh, again, this is the box, and apparently it is super easy to get the helmet out of. Uh, is there anything in here? I guess there's, ooh, there's some delicious desiccant <laughs> is in here. Ooh, and then this thing says, accessories inside. So there must be something in here. Uh, okay. Okay, there's more yummy, yummy desiccate. <laughs> I'm kidding, don't obviously, don't eat that. Um, did I lose anything else here in this box? No, nothing. Okay, so let's see what this accessory is. Uh, comes wrapped in a rubber band. Oh, okay, that's interesting. Little helmet case. <laughs> okay, that's cool. You get a little helmet case with the, this the unit. And then here's the helmet. So, looks very nice. Yes, I'm, again, I'm very excited um, about this one. We'll take a closer look at it later. Uh, yep, goggle strap band here in the back. But overall, looks very good. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's got Reco Reflectix uh, material on it, so that's cool. But yeah, this is much nicer than my other helmet, so I'm excited for the upgrade. Um, let's see if there's anything special on these things. Nothing much. Just got some information. Oh, I guess got more information on the Reco uh, searchable reflective material, so I guess you can read through that if you like. And then what is this? Oh, here, I guess this is your probably your user's manual, instruction on how to size it and tighten it up. And of course it comes in 14 different languages. So great. Okay, so that's the helmet. Um, I'm excited to try it out. So let's go uh, hop on a bike and see how this fits. All right, so I put about 100 miles on this so far uh, on both mountain and uh, road conditions. So I think uh, I've got some first impressions and overall, I think it's pretty darn great. Um, the adjustment, right? This knob right here seems to work very well. I adjusted it for my head and it seems to grab it and hold that. So on some other older bike helmets I've used in the past that have a similar mechanism, I've had to periodically readjust this. This doesn't seem to uh, be an issue. It seems to hold the uh, circumference very well. So that's great. Um, the spin pad, again, remember this is the Tectal Race spin. So it's got these pads. I think, well, what does spin stand for? It's like shearing pads inside or something like that. It's, it's I, I believe, uh, again, I'm not an expert, but I believe it's supposed to help with rotational trauma, right? So if you hit, this will kind of, the, the helmet will allow it to rotate a little bit, so it won't just kind of jerk your head around. But this makes it very easy for the helmet to slip on. They're, they're these nice, smooth pads. So the helmet goes on and stays on very nicely. 
Um, okay, so that's, uh, you know, sort of some first impressions is I, I do like it. Let's talk about um, maybe adding some stuff to this. And before we do that, maybe what we should do is let's, uh, I, I don't think I got a weight on this. So let's go ahead and weigh this helmet. And I'm curious to see how much it weighs compared to my older helmet. So let's go ahead and put this on a scale right here. And uh, okay, about 370 grams. That's my, this is this current helmet. Here's my older helmet, all right? This is the one I've had for a long time. Uh, no shearing pads, um, pretty darn simple. Let's see how much this old helmet kind of weighs. Uh, about 320 grams. So this one is 50 grams more, which I guess I'm not surprised with because it's just got a lot more protection. So as you can see, it's got a lot more protection in the rear. It's got the shearing pads. Uh, I think it's just overall better technology, All right? Uh, okay, so let's see. Let's talk about adding uh, stuff to this helmet because I actually want to add things like lights and mounts and maybe make a couple other modifications. All right, so one of the things I want to be able to add to the helmet is uh, a GoPro, and I want to be able to mount that on the top. So uh, it's pretty easy to do. Uh, luckily, the the top of the helmet's got a couple of nice flat spots where I think you can add this. Um, I wanted to add the GoPro as close to the center as possible. So ideally, I think it would be something like this, right? So that when you are biking along, the weight of the GoPro is pretty much straight down on your head. Um, and as you can see, it's pretty close. I think it's just going to be a little bit forward on the helmet, so this might have a tendency to kind of push your head down a little bit, but I think I can live with that. So, um... Let's go ahead and do that. So again, as you can see, I've cleaned off the top of the helmet and you can see that this spot is perfect, right? There's 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 plenty of flat spot right here um, where you don't have a vent and it should be pretty easy to mount the GoPro right there. So I'm gonna just go ahead and peel this off and get it stuck on to the helmet. All right, so I've got the GoPro mount stuck on. So now we should be able to slap on the camera. There you go. Now, um, one minor issue with this is if you look on the side, let me see if you can, if I can zoom this in and give you a, a better view of it, but there you go. As you can see, the helmet is not perfectly flat, right? It's curved. So unfortunately, the GoPro mount that I've got is, is a flat one. And as you can see, it doesn't really stick. You can see the front of it is kind of sticking up a little bit. So I'm a little dubious to see how long this is gonna last. Maybe I should have doubled up the um, amount of sticky uh, double-sided foam there to kind of hopefully bridge that gap a little bit better. But something to think about. Again, the curvature of the helmet does interfere with this GoPro mount, but it is pretty well stuck on there, so I think I think we'll be okay. Um, so I guess time will tell. I'll report back to see, uh, let you know how well this does. But like I said, this thing is on pretty good, so I'm not terribly concerned about it. Okay, so now. Um, Let's talk about another upgrade and thing that I like to add, I would like to add to the helmet, and that would be uh, lights. So I commute with my bike a lot, and that means riding in the dark sometimes. So I like to have a ton of lights mounted my to my helmet um, because it give increases visibility of both what I'm able to see as well as I'm able to be seen by cars a lot better. So the first thing I, I have is I've got this giant beefy LED. This is a Cygo Light uh, Triton X you know, triple LED uh, light that I use. And I usually like to have this mounted on the front of my helmet so that I can basically shed light on wherever I happen to be staring at. I find that the helmet mount lights are a lot better than having it mounted on the handlebars of your bike. So uh, what I typically do is I like to mount it on the front of the helmet. And again, we're gonna have to do this with the POC helmet. And as you can see, the nice thing about this setup is again, there's plenty of vents and it looks like I'm gonna be able to fit it right here and not interfere with either the visor or the GoPro that we just mounted. So let's go ahead and try that. So I'm just gonna stick this in right here. I'm just gonna pass this down through the helmet and then up the other side of the vent. And then if you just give me a second, hopefully what I can do is just get this kind of quasi attached. There we go, this is looking good. Okay, now I'm gonna run this back down under the helmet, tighten it up a skosh. And then let's center the light. And, uh, and there you go. That's actually pretty darn good.
So there we go. So that's the light. Now, how about the battery? So I always, I usually like to put the battery in the back to try to offset the weight a little bit. So let's see if I can get this thing hooked up. This is looking like a pretty good spot. Let's put it right back here. And again, usually what I'm gonna be doing is uh, I don't run a GoPro when I'm commuting, <laughs> all right? So I'll take the GoPro off um, during uh, commuting and just use this light. So let's go ahead and just, again, I'll get the battery pack attached run it through again there's lots of locations on the helmet it looks like for running these straps and attaching it and there you go so now i should be able to just hook this up in the front and there you go and we've got we've got light coming off perfect all right let me turn this off so that's my front light now the rear i usually have a little red led uh blinker that i put on the helmet so on my old helmet here what I ended up doing was I had to put, I had to fashion this extra little strap to hold onto this, uh, this light. But now what's nice about this Pock Tectal spin, uh, race spin helmet is it's got this rubber band O-ring in the back that's usually used for goggles. Well, that's actually a perfect mounting location because what I can do is let's just use this to mount the red light in the back. So I'm just gonna kinda clip it on like such. One, two. And then on the back of the helmet, there you go. And look at that, that's on pretty well. And I should be able to now turn this on. And there we go, we got a flashing red on the back. I've got lights on the front and we've got a GoPro to record everything <laughs> if we, we want to. So there you go, we've added a whole bunch of junk to this helmet and it looks like it works out pretty well. Of course, I bet we've like, greatly increase the weight. Now I'm just kind of curious to see what the weight is. Let's go ahead and pull over our scale. Um, earlier, just the stock helmet with none of the stuff on it, I think, what did we say it was? 370 grams? Let's see, what, what does this thing weigh now? Let me see if I can even get this thing on the thing. Uh, come on, there we go, that's pretty close. Yikes, <laughs> 870 grams. So we added half a kilogram of junk on top of the helmet. But uh, let's go ahead now with this setup and uh, see how it feels. All right, so here's the setup with this kind of ridiculous configuration up top. And uh, again, you can definitely feel it's it's heavier. And uh, in fact, the spin uh, technology, right, which allows the helmet to rotate, almost kind of works against you a little bit right now with all of this junk up top, for example. So if I, if I just shake my head a little bit, can you see, like I can feel the whole helmet rotating and, and shifting about my head. But again, I think uh, I, I can't really fault Pac because because uh, we've, we've put a half kilogram of junk up top. So again, this might be something similar to what you might wear if you're commuting, right? With these all these lights and the, and again, I don't think I would have the GoPro when I'm commuting, but long story short, uh, I guess I'm not surprised that it feels a little bit wonky with all of this gear up top. Now, what's interesting is, as we discussed earlier, uh, this helmet is made for, for goggles. Now, personally, I don't really ride with, with hardcore goggles, right? I'm not, uh, I'm, not, I'm not going to the Whistler bike park and bombing down every, every uh, weekend. I'm more of like going to the backwood trails near my house and kind of putter around. Uh, but uh, if you have goggles, right, what's surprising that uh, I discovered is that if you've got the goggles on, like such, the goggles actually really stabilize the entire hel uh, setup. So in this configuration, uh, actually now if I wiggle my head around, it's significantly less. It feels nice and solid. But again, that, I think that's because the interface between the helmet and the top of the goggles is very nice and tight, right? Can you see that right there? Basically the goggles are now pressed up against my face. The helmet is riding on the goggles and now this actually works quite well. So you know what? I might be a little bit of a, of a, of a convert that if I'm riding around with all of this junk, it almost might be more comfortable wearing goggles than typical sunglasses, which is what I'm usually using. So um, why don't we do this? Let's take off some of this extra junk up top and we'll see what the, uh, and get an impression of how the helmet performs in a configuration which is more akin to everyday use.
All right, so this is uh, maybe a little closer to something I would be riding just every day when you want to just grab your helmet and go out to the to the trails um, quickly. So no more junk up top. However, uh, like I said earlier, you know I usually don't ride with goggles. I usually just have sunglasses or uh, almost like a clear pair of safety glasses. So uh, one question you might have is how do the sunglasses or something like that does it interfere with the side of the helmet? And I'm actually happy to report that if you look at this right it actually works quite well right you can easily snake the arms of the sunglasses behind uh, the underneath the strap and underneath kind of this rear portion of the helmet so um, it works out quite well now the other thing that uh, I also usually have when I'm riding uh, mountain bike trails or heck even actually commuting is I uh, sometimes wear these guys so these are a pair of um, uh, they're basically bone conducting uh, headphones so they allow you to listen to music or audiobooks or whatnot, but at the same time, it's not an earbud, so it doesn't plug up your entire ear. So you can still hear traffic, you can still hear um, people outside and things like that. So the, the way these work, right, is they wrap around the back of your head and these portions of the, the, you know, the bone conducting speaker portion kind of rests against your temple. And now, again, there might be a concern of, can you actually fit this with all of this stuff in the back of the helmet? And again, I'm happy to report that it actually works. So you can stick it just like this, and you see that the bone conducting portion is exactly where it needs to be, and there is barely enough clearance, right? So it just do barely does not interfere with the back of the helmet. So if you look at this, right, the, uh, the, the rear band wraps nicely around the back of the head, right? And it sits there and I can go mountain biking and up and down trails and everything works quite nicely. And I can actually have all everything working, right? So the sunglasses don't interfere. The, the headphones don't interfere. Um, things are working well. Heck, you know, this is, uh, I'm actually recording this during the age of the, of the COVID pandemic and I can also stick on just a face mask um, and <laughs> wrap it around the ears so you can basically have an entire getup and luckily the helmet doesn't interfere with any of those. So I'm pretty happy with this setup so far. Okay, so let me talk about one other thing that might not be on the forefront of your mind when you're thinking about helmets. Uh, now, I don't know about you, but what I typically do is with my helmet is when I'm going to the trailhead and I've got a bunch of stuff like my gloves and sunglasses and, you know, maybe my camera and my, my headset. Um, what I typically do, right, is I just stick them inside my helmet like such, <laughs> right? I put them in there and then um, I throw all of this in the car, right? I'll just chuck this whole thing in the car or I'll hang it up on a loop or something like that and I'll go drive to the trailhead. Well, nine times out of ten, uh, you're driving around, things are jostling around, this is going to spill and you're going to dump all of this stuff all over the place on the floor of your car or in the trunk or whatnot. Long story short, a lot of times it doesn't stay in the helmet. There's been a couple of times where I just grabbed the entire helmet thinking both of my gloves were in there and one of the gloves had fallen out somehow and I get to the trailhead and I've got one glove. That's, that's never any fun. So, uh, you know, earlier during the unboxing, you know, we showed how Pac actually included this helmet bag. So this is a, in my opinion, highly underrated. Like, I don't know why they're not talking about this more for, at least for the way I use the helmet. This is absolutely perfect because now when I've got all my gear inside the helmet, I just stick all of this inside of the helmet bag draw the little drawstrings tight and now I've got an entire grab bag that now I can safely throw this in the car. I don't care if this gets jostled around and thrown uh, all over during the ride because I know when I get there everything is still going to be inside there. So now I've got one thing to grab when I am uh, heading out to the trail or going on a ride. Everything is self-contained in this helmet uh, bag. So again, uh, nice little addition on Pox part by including this with the helmet. All right, so uh, I think I'm gonna fix this. Um, remember earlier we put this GoPro mount on the top of the helmet and the helmet top is actually curved. And I was lazy and just used one of these GoPro mounts where uh, the bottom plane is completely flat, right? So obviously that flat doesn't mate super well with the, the curved surface of the helmet. And if you kind of 
twist this a little bit. Yeah, I don't know if you can see that easily. I mean, there is some motion uh, there. So I think what I should have done is I should have just not have been lazy and bought another one of these curved pieces. So that is what I ended up doing. So this curved one right here, I don't know how well you can see this, but the bottom is curved. And this piece is like 50 cents on eBay. So I should have just bought that and been patient waiting for it to arrive instead of mounting this flat one. So let's go ahead and see how easy it is to take off uh, this from the top of the helmet and see if that has any damage. All right, so that came off reasonably well, and as you can see, absolutely no markings on the top of the helmet, so that's perfect. So I think we're ready to basically try this again with uh, the curve part. All right. So there we go, that looks a lot better, right? That seems to fit a lot nicer, fully secured onto the helmet. Now, the GoPro and the additional mount here for the squishy part. Hopefully it will stop the motion a lot and hold the camera a lot more uh, steadily. Okay, and in addition to mounting a GoPro up top, I wanted to show you uh, the helmet with a, uh, a 360 camera. So this is an Insta360 1X camera that I use, and uh, as you can see, it's much taller, and the ca the, the helmet keeps the, hel the camera stabilized very nicely. You can see as I wiggle my head as I'm going around, it actually keeps this up top um, and focused on uh, the action quite nicely. And in fact, I feel like this shoots much better footage on the camera than a GoPro. In fact, I have a completely separate dedicated video where I compare um, footage from a GoPro versus a 360 camera such as this, and you can take a look at that. But um, right now, maybe let's let's take a look at some of the footage uh, shot from the 360 camera uh, on this helmet. And as you can see, the footage is actually quite nice and smooth, and uh, you don't get a lot of rock or motion. In fact, everything seems very stabilized, almost to the level of uh, almost appearing like it's shot with a gimbal, but this is not a gimbaled setup. This is just using that uh, Insta360 1X camera on top of the POC helmet. So I'm pretty happy with these results, and uh, I think this is going to work for future applications. All right, and let me show you one other thing uh, about the helmet that uh, I haven't seen too many other people cover. Now, this is my old helmet, and I wanted to show you a feature that uh, I really like about my old helmet was the fact that you can easily go from a, a mountain bike style helmet, right, with the visor, and then the visor can just pop right off, right? This visor comes right off in two seconds, and now you've got something that looks a little bit more aesthetically like a, uh, a road helmet, right? Now, I actually ride road probably 90% of the time, so what I was interested in and in doing with this POC uh, helmet, remember this is the Tectal Race Spin, is I kind of wondered, can I take this visor off? And nobody seems to talk about if this visor is easily removable. Um, now, what's interesting is, let me show you a screenshot, right? So here is the Tectal uh, Race Spin, which is the helmet that I've got. And here's another POC helmet, the Ventral Air Spin, which is their uh, road helmet. Now, look at these two things. They look pretty darn similar. The only difference is the visor. So again, let's take a look at the visor here on the Tectal Race Spin. Now, what you can easily do is you'll notice there's a little knob, a uh, little screw here. This is easily hand adjustable. So you can loosen this, but what that allows you to do is it changes the angle of the visor easily. So now you can crank this thing up or crank it down, what have you, and then tighten it back up, all right? However, uh, it's you can't actually take the entire visor off with this knob. What you're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to completely remove this screw Okay, so I'll take this completely out and do this, don't do this over gravel, do it over a nice smooth surface and I'll show you why in a second because, oh, there, there it goes. This part falls out the back. There's this part with this tiny little nut that you don't want to lose, okay? So that's the first step is get rid of this little mounting bracket thingy and now the visor is kind of loose and now what you need to do is just grab yourself a small Allen wrench and actually these do come out fairly easily so these these bolts on the side you can actually easily whoopsie well maybe not easily <laughs> I'm a little bit of a butterfingers here but the bolt 
will come out with this little kind of, you know, interesting washer, trapezoidal washer. So again, this is why you want to do this over some place where you're not going to lose all of the components. And again, switch it, do it on the other side, take this off, okay? And then make sure you don't uh, misplace all those small little parts. And now, look at this. This, and actually here, maybe I'll move this over to one side of the picture and let's take a, look, a side view of, the, again, this is now the Tectol Race Spin helmet, which in my estimation, right, here's a side view, doesn't this look a whole lot like that ventral air spin? And I mean, here's the back, you can clearly see that there's, a, there, there's maybe a little less ventilation on this Tectol Race Spin, but uh, you know, I think I'm gonna keep myself cool by fanning myself with all the extra cash that I'm gonna to save by basically converting this tectile race spin and basically look almost identical to this ventral air spin. That ventral air spin is $250. So yeah, I'm just gonna fan myself with all the extra money I saved um, and basically use this same helmet as both a mountain helmet and a road helmet. All right, so one other thing that I wanted to show you about the helmet, I don't know if I would call this a, uh, like a disadvantage or just, you know, something that happens, um, is when you're actually in wet conditions, when you're riding through the rain with this helmet, or if you end up sweating uh, a lot. So I was hoping to get some footage when I came back from a commute um, in the rain where I was dripping wet, but as luck would have it right now, we are in the middle of this heat wave and I don't think there's gonna be uh, rain for a long time. So the kids are gonna help me out and simulate a rain shower and we'll see what happens when the helmet gets wet. Hit it! Oh. Oh. Keep it coming! Keep it coming! There we go. Keep going! <laughs> we need to get it really sopping wet. So this is like if you're running through, you know, you're, you're going on your commute and you're going home riding in the rain for 20 minutes or you're out on a super hot day and you know you're sweating a lot <laughs> and this can end up happening okay let's try this this might work okay that's good can you throw me that finding nemo towel <laughs> and then i'll show you what ends up happening with this so look at this so if you've been if you're riding a lot those spin pads actually soak up a lot of water so if i go like this and i move my helmet you can, can you see how these pads, they are just dripping water down. So these interior spin pads, they're great for, uh, for padding and for allowing the helmet to shear, but they also sort of act like a sponge. So they'll soak up sweat, rain, what have you. And uh, just something to think about it. Again, like I said, it's not, I don't know if I would call it a con, but it's just something that happens with this helmet that I haven't had uh, experience with in previous helmets. So again, if you're sweating a lot, these can soak up a lot of your sweat. And then as you ride around or you jostle it around, some of that can come dripping down your face. So something to think about. All right, so I know we've talked a lot about the positives of the helmet and I really do enjoy it for the most part, but I do want to show you one place where I think actually Pac got it kind of wrong with this helmet and it has to do with the chin strap. So let me show you, if, you, if I take this off and you look at the chin strap, you'll see that the chin strap is uh, just has a single length of webbing which goes down to the buckle and then curves around and comes back up out the far side of the buckle right now notice they have this little piece of rubber here this little thing that can slide up and down right you can slide there you go this little rubber thing that's used to try to keep the chin strap in place. Long story short, this does not work at all. <laughs> Meaning you can put the helmet on and then you can very, very easily adjust this um, the tightness of the chin strap, okay? So once you have it there, if you look at this, it it's actually, look, look how easy that is to come apart and get completely loose. So I don't know why they failed so, so spectacularly with this, like nobody seemed to test this, but this chin strap, it, you just wiggle it a little bit or just the act of taking your helmet off will, will, will basically increase and change the length of your chin strap every single time. So every time I ride, I find myself having to go ahead 
clip in and then tighten the chin strap, which is a, a little bit of a pain, right? Surprisingly, no other helmet I've ever owned has had this issue with this chin strap being so darn loose and so able to just come apart. So for example, let me just show you. For ex Here's here's my, my old helmet, right? And you can kind of see that this one has, has two lengths of webbing right here's let me see if i can break the spread this apart and make it a little easier right, you can see two links of webbing that go down into the into the buckle and then turn around and there's no o-ring and there's no uh rubber piece but this is solid look at this you do this and it does not change the length of the chin strap it is it's it's completely set the way i wanted to so i don't have to worry about it coming loose as i'm run, riding around and it's always that way other helmets so for example Here's my, uh, my, my ski helmet, and you can kind of see this one also has a single length of webbing. Uh, it's kind of hard to, to see in the camera, especially with this fuzzy piece. Let me see if I can get you a better view. I don't know if you can see that very easily, but it's the same design where it has one single piece of webbing coming down to the buckle, turning around, and then it's just got this O-ring. Like it's just, it's, it's even cheesier than that piece of rubber that Pac had. This is just like a simple O-ring. But again, for whatever reason, this helmet does not have that problem. You know, you put it on and the, and the length of the chin strap stays tight in either direction. You really have to sit here and manipulate this if you want to make this thing tighter or looser. So again, um, that's, that's probably one of the places where I th I'm surprised they failed with this, with this POC helmet is that the chin strap, it, it's just way too easy for the chin strap length to change, thereby making it loose. So what I think I'm going to have to end up doing is I'm going to have to set the chin strap length the way I want it to, and then I might end up just putting a couple stitches through the webbing so that this thing absolutely can't move. All right, so there you have it. This is uh, the POC Tectal Race Spin Helmet, and for the most part, I have been thrilled with it. I've been very happy and pleased. Um, aside from a few small missteps, like uh, those spin pads acting like sponges in wet conditions and this failure of a chin strap to stay tight, um, for the most part, the helmet has performed great. In fact, you can see over here, I've taken a few uh, tumbles and crashes. Um, I haven't really whacked myself good on this yet, and again, I'm going to talk about things and hope that I never do, um, but for the most part, in these small bumps, they it's worked great. Uh, I don't think I've suffered any concussions, and again, I'm going to hope I never have to test the full crash capabilities of the helmet. Um, that being said, one of the other capabilities that maybe we didn't talk about, and again, that I hope I never really have to test, is I, for whatever reason, if you noticed, uh, we talked about this a little earlier in the unboxing, but it has this this reco system, which again is an avalanche rescue system where a a rescuer can use an emitter which sings out, sends out a signal which will hit this RECO um, uh, enabled helmet, right? It has material here that will bounce the wave back and basically allow you to be found. It's almost like a poor man's avalanche beacon, right? And again, I don't think I'm ever going to be wearing this helmet in an avalanche situation. I've heard people say that, okay, maybe this RECO is going to be helpful if you're lost in the woods and you have a uh, rescue helicopter that's looking for you and searching for you through a uh, thick tree canopy. But again, that seems like a very small edge case scenario where I hope I'm never going to have to test that reco capability, but I guess I'm glad that it's already baked into the helmet. Uh, um, yeah, so with that being said, uh, like I said, I really enjoy the, the helmet. It's worked great for, uh, for mountain biking applications or for road biking. or for everyday commuting. So with that being said, uh, I think this is probably a great spot to leave it. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if so, I also hope you'll consider supporting the channel either via Patreon or by subscribing. Surprisingly, if you just scroll a little ways down and click on that subscribe button, it really does help me continue making these videos. And speaking of the new videos, remember they come out every Monday, so I hope you'll join me at a future discussion and we can all learn something new together. So until then, I think I'll sign off. Talk to you later. Bye.